Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello everyone and thank you for joining me on a very special edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P. Jim's in Boston this month, but I'm joined by two very special guests. We have Mr. Rocky Holland of West Hartford Wine Club. Hello. Thank you for joining us, Rocky. Thank you for having me. And Mr. Matt Whitney, owner of Maximum Beverage. So you guys are in for a treat. Jim, you're missing a good one. So uh, you owe me one. Or actually, I owe you one. So uh, we're going to be doing Merlot today. And I've never done a show in almost the six and a half years I've been doing the show of just Arm Merlot. And uh, usually Merlot causes some consternation. People get a little squiggly when they hear of Merlot because they think, you know, the movies and stuff like that. But I'm here to tell you guys. One movie in particular. Yeah, yes. just one movie. Isn't it funny how that happens? It's... But I'm here to tell you, Merlots are great and I enjoy them and I think we're going to taste some good ones tonight. Yeah. So um, I know... Uh, Matt at uh, Maximum Beverage, you guys, you know, you guys know everything about wine. Where, where do you try. guys stand on Merlot? Is it still a big seller for you guys? Uh, no, not a big seller. Um, my goal, and it's funny that we're doing this. My goal, I think, going forward, I think Merlot is going to make a comeback. It's got to, right? Yeah. Everything, everything in the wine cyclical? business is cyclical. Yeah. So, you know, it's been. I don't, you know, I'm trying to think. When did Sideways come out? Right? Because that, that's the whole. Oh, four. Uh, 2004. Yeah. Thank you. 2004 Sideways came out, killed the Merlot business. Pinot Noir went through the roof. And uh, I think we're we're at we're at kind of that ten year flip, and so maybe we might see Merlot prices have come down a mm -hmm. lot because you know they it's just not as sought after. So um, there's a controversy though. I mean, uh, some people believe that Merlot was on its way out. It was popular for a while. Pinot Noir started to become popular because it became more affordable and it became better. Yeah. And then there are other people that are into the whole sideways thing. Like, what do you what's your all's take on? Yeah, that? I, I, I got to say, blows though. my mind that a movie. Could, could kill a billion dollar industry like that, you know? I, I, you know, I think it's one of those things where just wine was at a certain state at that time when that movie came out where it was just one of those things that everything, sort of the cards fell into place. It was place. just poised. It was just poised for a change. New. And, uh, you know, I want to say, Rocky, I, I, you know, I've been in town for, for some time, but I'm glad to know that there is a West Hartford Wine Club, and I want to talk about that oh, yeah. later on. And I, I, are you the president? Or you the I don't founder, know that or? there is such a thing as a president. I'm one of the moderators along with my lovely wife, Sandy, so... Well, that's uh, very exciting. I, I, it's Facebook, so. Uh, more about that. So, but anyways, just to get to our first wine, because I know we have four to ta taste tonight. I don't want to, we all, of course, want to taste every wine. So the first choice is my choice. It's part of my wine club. I get, uh, usually once a month, I get about, oh, maybe a case of wine. This I had about six months ago, Monarch Glen. I think it's from the Saddle Horn Bottling and uh, Cellaring. Um, what's my notes say? It's from the Saddlehorn Cellars out in California. And it's a moderately priced Merlot. I think it's between usually $14 and $17. And I found it very subtle, but there was enough aspects of fruit to make it enjoyable without being like a zin or too overpowering. So I'm curious what my two experts here, because I know Rocky, you're a Merlot guy. And I, of course, we all know, you know Matt, uh, he's a pro. So I actually <laughs> like this for a Merlot. So I'm curious to see what your opinion's gonna be. And you don't have to lie if you think it sucks. They buy a world. This sucks. Yeah, we don't. We try not to go negative. You can go negative, trust me. I've had some dogs on the show. Yeah. <laughs> I think the nose, you know, is pretty solid. Yeah. Good fruit. Get some fruit. It finishes dry, which I sort of uh, like a little bit. It's a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's, it's dry. I don't think it's sweet. It's definitely not too fruit forward. I think it lacks some tannin. I like think other than that, it's yeah. very soft. It is soft. And that's yeah. actually why we have three different varietals sure. here from different countries, which is great because it gives you an example of if you like more of a softer Merlot, generally California's, and I know uh, right. Rocky, yours is a California too, yep. right? 
So it's a yeah, but it's going to throw it's, you it's off got a little a bit. It's kind of got a crazy blend going on. So there's a backstory behind that that I find very interesting. Very alcohol forward wine though. It's like actually, I, I should ask fifteen our, something percent. Yeah, it's fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, the, this one here, the Monarch Glen, I think is uh, yeah, that one's five. that one's definitely yeah, not as not as high on that. And do you right. generally like eating when you're doing your tastings, even at Maximum, when you're doing your, your yeah. wine club? Do you have fruit or cheeses cheese. when you're gotta have cheese? It's always the cheese. I mean, if, yeah, if you're if you're mouth gripping tannins, you definitely want some blue cheese, something along the lines of that. But, it does make I mean, a difference. There are some wines that I just like to pop and pour. <laughs> it depends on what the wine is. I think this is really drinkable i mean it's not you know it's not over complicated it's yep fruit forward but soft and I'm definitely getting some tannins yeah. now yeah it's it's, it's, it's not going to offend people and i think no. that's important now we me and jim have been doing this show for a long time and generally we we don't like talking about wines that are so overly complex where people are going to be mm -hmm. offended like yeah. like well, I, I don't know what the hell you're talking about it just tastes good yeah. this is one of those wines i think is like that it, it tastes good it's a comfortable wine. You're not going to really scare people or people are going to say this is awful. It's sort of a good wine to serve to maybe to start off. If you're yeah. doing a wine tasting, you're having a wine dinner, it's a good moderate priced, easy to drink when wine. When I think of Merlot, I think of that. I think of medium tannin, medium acid, medium sugar, and you know, it's, you can stray in one direction or another, but yep. for the most part, it's a very drinkable wine. And I got to admit that since you told me that we were going to do a show on Merlot, I started ordering more of it because I never do. And I was every single time I was like, why don't I drink more of this stuff? It's it's overlooked. It, it is it's, it's, certainly it's, overlooked. It's almost like my I, I would call it my favorite variety that I never purchase. The name you know? itself it's, is a little depressing. Merlot. It's very, <laughs> you know, it doesn't really Pinot Noir kind of gives you that Cabernet. Yeah, Cabernet. It's Cab. It's, it's know, almost like Merlot. Cab's like younger brother yeah. that doesn't get all the attention. Sure. You know, like you know, I think we just answered our question about the movie. Giamatti is such a sad actor most of the time. Yeah, right? and he has a sad face. People saw him drinking the Merlot. He's sad, therefore they associated the Merlot with the sadness. Yeah, right. That could have been the issue in 2004. <laughs> I, You're right. I'm yeah. going to say, like I said, this is thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. I'm going to still give thumbs up even though it's my choice because I like it. It's a good, easy to drink Merlot. Yeah, absolutely. I would say, yeah, probably thumbs up, thumbs sideways. I don't know yeah, that I would buy twice. You yeah. know, I, uh, but well, obviously, because you still um, got some of there in your glass, right? Go finish it up, Rocky. Should we talk about the next one? Yeah, let's go to the next you one. You guys are going to have to give me a baby bottle with like a nip. I should have brought a pour. I apologize. Just generally our guests just chug it down. <sighs> Rocky, so it's there it like, is. So next one I bought, brought here, um, Red and Tori Merlot. Uh, it's from Italy, uh, from the Veneto region, which is in the north. Mm -hmm. um, and the producer uh, is the, um, I get the, gotta get this right now, the <clears throat> Di Stefani family. And the winemaker is Alessandro Di Stefani. He's won a ton of awards, a lot of awards. I don't know if you've heard of Gambaro Rosso. It's a, it's a big publication in Italy, sort of like, you know, the Wine Spectator of Italy. And he's won a ton of what they call Trey Bicchieri Awards. So, you know, that is basically like 95 points. Oh, wow. You want to give Very it so. Good. So it's not for this wine, for Wait, his it, main family yes. label, the Di Stefani. That's, a, that's so, so important, though. Yeah. So, so one of the things they focus on, and I think it's a big push here in our culture, especially in the West Hartford area, is uh, the wine itself and what they practice is a lot of biodynamic farming, organic farming. Um, the wine isn't certified biodynamic, but as far as they go with the Red and Tory label, all the, all the focus is on, um, you know, not using pesticides and things like that. So, um, you know, which in, in the wine business has a cost, right? So, um, you know, that's the focus there. It's uh, distributed by a West Hartford resident, uh, Doug Rankin, who owns Missing Link Wine Company. Um, and we, you know, we sell a lot of it. So I thought it might be a great opportunity, especially because we don't get a lot of, you know, Merlot from Italy. You know, if you think of Merlot from Italy, a lot of times you think of that kind of super Tuscan area, right? Yep. You think of, let's say, Ornolaya Masetto, which runs three, $400 a bottle. And right now you have a nice bottle. It's right in the fifteen dollar range. Um, yep. Like so, we've done quite a few Italian wine shows, so this is the first for this particular one. And uh, I know a lot of times people think, well, if I'm drinking Italian wine, it's got to got to eat it with food, and that's really not the case at all anymore. I mean, you can drink Italian wine on its own a lot of times too. What's unique about this is it's all stainless steel, so it's a really fresh, kind of vibrant, um, you know, very dry, uh, but very kind of all about the fruit and all about the you know the wine itself there's no oak so um and that's again a style that that i think is coming alive a lot people like to 
uh, focus on that stainless steel so the grapes and the kind of the terroir it, gives you. It's not that tannic for something that's no. not in oak. It isn't, but the flavor, I, I sort of like it even better yeah. than the Monarch, like that. Monarch yeah. line. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's sort of neutral. There's nothing that's too overpowering yeah. in the sip. Like yeah. I, I think the Monarch sort of was a little bold in the beginning. This is sort of smooth right from the first sip on. It's got a nice amount of acidity, uh, great fruit, and I think, you know, it finishes some, what some people call smooth. Now, the alcohol content, I think, I don't know if we discussed this in the first one, I think the it's Monarch is about 12.5. Yeah. Is that about the same or is that a little I think higher? It's around 13 something. Uh, 12.5. Yeah, it's not, not, yeah. Not you know, that's the old school. 12.5 is like Bordeaux from mm -hmm. the 90s and 80s, you know? Um, we didn't actually compare the colors. I should have looked at mine a little bit closer. I think this is similar, just a tad bit more yeah. ruby than yeah. the, yeah, the yeah, Monarch. Like definitely. Like a uh, garnet. Italian ones. And actually, you might brick. know this, uh, Matt. When it comes to cellaring or aging Merlots, what's the school on that? I know there's a lot of varietals or there's a lot of price ranges, but what is your opinion on cellaring for any length of time? I think, Merlot? you know, you need a, uh, you know, a, a, a wine, especially with Merlot. You, you would treat it the same way you treat any wine like a Cabernet. Um, wines under 25 bucks generally are meant to be drank if not that day, that week, that month. There are some exceptions um, to that. There yeah. are. Um, certainly you can find them in different regions. Um, but, you know, a, a lot of the wine is, you know, and you know this, I'm sure you've mentioned this a tons of times on the show, you know, whatever percentage of wine, 90-something percent is meant to be consumed within the first year. That's true. Um, you know, it is a business, right? They're trying to sell wine. They don't want yeah. everyone to hold it. It's hard to sell their wine, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you got to store it properly. That going, oh. um, I, I, none of these wines here are... are, are as far as these three go, are probably meant to sell, or you know, maybe the Bordeaux uh, could could stand up for a year or two. Yeah, that's what I really meant. I think yeah. when I say sell, I'm not talking about 10, 15 years. Sure. Maybe two, three, four years. Yeah, um, this wine's meant to be drank. It's fresh. Drink it now. Um, you know, you get into a Bordeaux. They just uh, when you get those tannins, you really want to melt those tannins to mellow out. Um, but you need you need a good contrast of fruit and tannin for that wine to last. Mm -hmm. And so some of these wines are they have that, but they don't have the tannin. Or you got the 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 tannin with not a lot of fruit, and sometimes that you know that wine kind of dies out after a couple of years. Now, have you actually done uh, when you have the wine club? Have you done just a merlot tasting? Uh, no, we've we're trying to get more meet and greet gatherings together, and part of the reason why I'm glad you invited me here is that. Uh, you know, we, we want to organize that more. Uh, the, the, we've actually only done one. We've only been around for, God, I don't want to say we started in June, May or June of last year. Uh, so we, starting in October, uh, we had one. It was a blind uh, tasting. It was a blind tasting contest. It was a lot of fun. Uh, everybody got a sheet, and they, uh, they, they had to pick the varietal, uh, yep, the that's vintage, common, yeah. the, the, uh, the region. And so you got points based on what you did. Um, is it somebody's house? You guys—that was we had that at our house, um, and we had a we had a couple of people that that were interested in scheduling more, but then the holidays came up, and so it was like a lot of scheduling conflicts. The holidays are behind us now, so. Uh, How many same, people do you like for the uh, club? For that one, I think we had like 15, 20 people there, and that was pretty amazing because a lot of the people that we actually know in the club were not able to make it. Almost no one that we know in the club was able to make it to that one. So. I think that's the only thing because I, I, but when it comes to doing the wine dinners, because you know, we have a lot of them ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's a point where there's too many people. You mm -hmm. want to sort of keep it intimate enough where yeah. people can actually make yeah, an opinion and talk. Yeah. I think 15 to 20 is about where you should be. Obviously, you still want more people to yeah. join in, but there's there's a part where it's just there's too many people and you can't really Yeah, that's talk. been the fault on my part of just not getting it together and trying to get more organizational with, with you know, planning. I'm going to help you with that. So All right, I'm any, help with any, that. any help that you can give me and as I go over uh, what, what it is that we do, also the people that are members of the club, I appreciate any help from them if they want to organize something. Uh, at their house, at a restaurant, uh, we talked about uh, cork cork fees. Um, you know, That's a big like deal for the me. Pond house. Yeah. I, it, that was one of those things that I, I did not know that that was a thing in Connecticut. I know that it's a thing elsewhere, uh, but uh, just to give you an idea of the usefulness of this little club, I went on and I posted you know, the cork fees. What do you know about cork fees? And within minutes, a lot of people were chiming in, people from across the United States, who said, yeah, it was popular over here, it was popular over there. Lists, you know, lists came of places around here that uh, do cork fees. So it's it's a neat little club. You can pretty much a lot of restaurants. There's guys like Matt on there that are ready to answer questions. We'll do uh, the cork fee. Stuff and, Some are a little higher than others. Sure. Yeah. Um, we when we do our wine tasting, we want to have a, a bigger venue. 
like the Pond House is one of my yeah, favorites. I was thinking about the one there. They're five or ten dollars yeah. still, even yeah. though they sell wine now. Yeah, it's still ten dollars, five dollars. Yeah, they focus on Connecticut wine, so it's there's no conflict, right? There you is want to enjoy no. local wine. I, la, as far as I remember, last time I might be speaking out of turn there. I don't know if they have. No, they do. They still mostly have Connecticut, Connecticut wines, wines, but right. they've upped it. They've upped their right. menu a little bit. Sure. We like Elephant Trail in Avon. Uh, yeah. If you like spicy Thai food or even just good Thai food. Though you're sort of limited to what you can drink wine wise with some of that food, obviously. But what you do a spicy tie, like maybe yeah, a you go a little, or something. Yeah, you go Riesling, you go something with good fruit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think wine pairing, it gets a little uh, excessive, right? You yeah, overdo I drink it. prisoner with a fillet, yes. and people make fun of me for doing that, but it's it's yeah. just a personal preference. I Listen, think. you start. I start. It's number one thing I always want. tell people: start with what you like. Yeah. So if you don't like Riesling, why are you going to drink Riesling with spicy Thai food? Okay. I don't like sweet wine. Okay, don't drink sweet wine. Right. Find something that has a nice fruit. You know, and, and in the end, you know, there's people that will drink a Coke with their dinner. It's like, you know, that's what they like. So, but even some of the more expensive restaurants in town, uh, you know, I think Max will let you bring a bottle, but you're going to pay 25 or yeah. 30 dollars. Well, that's where, you know. Because that's, the, you know, cutting into the I understand line, it, I totally but understand sometimes you just that. want your own freaking I know. wine. Right. I know. Well, you, you know? You, it's got to make you sense, You want your right? wine, you don't want to cook a steak. It's right. just... And you don't like uh, paying the three times or four yeah, times four the old because you know depending what the on where costs. you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Rocky, yeah. you're, you're falling behind oh, me, Rocky. Okay. The, uh, <laughs> he's going to be drunk before we get him out of here tonight. <laughs> you're not my father. Thank so, <laughs> so our next wine actually is our only Bordeaux French tonight. It is a 90% uh, Merlot, 10% Cab Franc. I tasted this one only briefly. So and generally, I'm, I don't like going into cold too often, but this one I am because I wanted to have a French-oriented Merlot on the show tonight. This already, you can see, is really dark yeah. compared to the other two. Do you sure. know what the number one varietal in Bordeaux is? I do not. Two to one Merlot over. It's the Cabernet, which is amazing because when you think of Bordeaux, you think of Left Bank, you think of Puyac, you think of the, the first growths and the fame that they have there, but... The people that live in Bordeaux, this is what they do. They drink, they drink Merlot. Something like 60% by acreage is, uh, or hectares. Is, most expensive uh, Merlot. wine in all of Bordeaux's, uh, well, I don't know if technically Petrus. most Petrus, yeah. you know, that's 100% Merlot. That's you know, five grand even, a bottle straight out of the We didn't even discuss. You can't. We've only opened these up in the last 30 minutes for the show. Um, I'm going to guess that probably at least the, the Bordeaux probably could breathe a little bit longer. Mm. But in general, do you think these need to be aged or aired at all? Aerated at all? You know what? Honestly, I think you got a 2014 vintage Bordeaux. That really? thing's Yeah, it's got plenty of, it's open. I mean, you know, when you, and when you open a bottle, you're not getting any aeration at all. You got that small uh, enclosure and you're really getting no Nothing spread there. So yeah, I always tell people, there. pour your wine in your glass. Let it, Let it breathe there for a couple minutes, and then it'll open up. You know, you can swirl a little, a little bit. Don't get too, uh, too overly swirly. But Sometimes I'll pour the entire thing through an aerator into a, like a, a canister mm -hmm. and pour it right back into there's the bottle. There's tons of gadgets you and can do that too. All yeah, kinds absolutely. Of things. If you're in a, if you're in a pinch and you need to get some oxygen into the air, that's a great way to do yeah. it. So. I will say this wine compared to the first two, there's definitely more tannins. I think sure. in this one, it's definitely a little bit more. I don't want to say bitter, but it's a little bit more. What's What's the price point on this? That's fourteen between fourteen, 14 and fifteen bad. ninety nine. Yeah, I would definitely buy that all day. Yeah. What was the price point on the on the first one? Then? The first one is uh, fifteen to seventeen. Yeah. But they're so conf. You can definitely if you taste of that next to that. That's that's way more like berry fruit driven. Yeah. Yep. And this has definitely got a lot more of that kind of leather minerality. Which you would expense for a French wine, anyways. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's I, you know you notice the Cap Franc too. It's got like this. You can kind of get it a little bit, a little bit Break of that, jowls there. yeah, and a yeah. little bit of that kind of bitter, uh, like herb, herbaceousness on the Pure tongue. Thing, yeah. Yep, yep, and it yeah. kind of, you know, that's why they add it. But this yeah. is one of those it's kind of wines. Right it's there. not going to be for everybody's taste. So you know, if if, if you, I always post the wines that we drink on the show, and you know, if you, if you want to try the ones that we're drinking, I would probably say that this one will be the one. You say, wow, this really doesn't seem like a, a merlot to me. Mm. But, you know, I would still say give it a shot because it's... it's if you don't think that seems like a Merlot, wait till you try the Well, that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> you, Rocky actually brought the got, most expensive uh, wine we're drinking tonight. I, so. I didn't know that there were price points. I didn't want to, like, I apologize that I brought too expensive of a wine. You did not. I had that. no idea. You did not bring a too expensive wine. We just don't like Because I have got a Petrus <laughs> over there. It's five grand. I was gonna, <laughs> nah, but, I, but never mind. So. Actually, you, know, you could put it on the yeah. table. People yeah, would have exactly. thought we would have drank that exactly. after the show. That would have been a great word of mouth thing. That's pretty funny. Yeah. 
Never had it, Patriots. Never had it. I haven't either. I'm I, willing to bet that I will die one day and yeah. probably still be able to say that. Right. I would love to put that on my bucket list, but there's a whole lot more things five that I would, I would spend five grand on other than a bottle of wine. So, so uh, we're on our third one. I'm going to say, even though I've tasted this one only briefly, that's probably my least favorite tonight. Really? Yeah. Mm. Only because I, I, I think it's a little bit too... It's, my mouth feels very dry. Your mouth feels dry. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of fruit that's that's kind of calming everything. If down. we were eating, there's and there is food on the table, we'll eat that after the show. Uh, I think it'd be better. I think that it's wine that's meant so. to be uh, used with some anything that's juice. got tannin in. It's always going to taste yeah. better with some you know, you know fatty I, foods. I, I think it's balanced. I, I think it's all right. You know, they're all, these wines are all completely different, right? Uh, it's yep. nice how that worked out because we brought some wines, and um, but I think the that's actually a really nice you know, petite chateau, as they call it. Um, you know, Bordeaux, it's just really balanced. Um, New England Wine and Spirits right in the back out of West Haven. Um, you know, they're a great little company. That's good wine. That's, That's unusual. Normally, yeah. uh, what I, I have two guests who like what I brought, and I usually like what I brought because I usually tasted it. Sure. This time I'm having second no, thoughts about what I brought. My, both my guests like it, so yeah. fantastic. So that's good. So now, Rocky. All right. We're very excited. At least Let's I am. Let's give this thing a whirl, shall we? Go ahead. Yeah, I think co the color is uh, the dead giveaway. Really There's dead. probably really some Syrah, dead some Zinfandel well, in there. Yeah, I, I think that the process and the procedure and how they make this wine is different, way different than, and probably closer to how that one is made. Um, so you know the Dave Finney story. I mean, you could give us. Dave Finney? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you want to, I can talk about, I mean, I'll talk about he's the a prisoner. Ma right? He's a master blender. So yeah, the prisoner, you know. not involved with this company anymore, but. Sure. Uh, so Dave Finney really hit it off crazy with, with, it. with the prisoner, which was this brand new world style. Um, That's over definitely the their top, flagship. High yeah. alcohol. Um, when you say high alcohol, like 15, higher? Like 15. It's, it's Zinfandel, so 15, you know, you're 16, talking 15. You know, and a half, whatever you can get to without what they put on the bottle is not always necessarily what's in the glass. You get a you get a one percent uh, plus or minus. Um, but you know, Dave Finney really hit it out of the park with the prisoner, and then they they he sold that. Um, I don't know when they started making Thorn. I think he sold the company in tr in thirteen. So the twelve oh, okay. is still he his. Made that. Yeah, that's still Orange Swift. Right. But then it kind of split off into the prisoner, and I, I, I don't know. Yeah, so he I, sold I the company. Open, you knew, so he had the, he had the Orin Swift wine label, uh, wine, you know, it encompassed a, a few different labels, starting with the prisoner. He sold that for lots of money in the uh, probably $30, $40 million range. He started, now he's sold it off. So now it's part of the prisoner wine company. He started a few other projects, um, stuff that was actually winery only when he was, um, or tasting room only when he was doing because he doesn't have he didn't have a winery. He's sourcing his grapes, you know, really kind of looking, going out and, and finding kind of the best stuff he could find. Um, some of the traditionalists are not a fan of, of yeah, Dave Finney. Dave Finney is kind but of but he's got a cult trends. following of people. He has that, a cult following. He was that love it. I'm one of them. Right, self proclaimed. You know, under under stuff. under fifty bucks at the time. I think when the wine, pris, prisoner came out, it was probably like thirty nine bucks, thirty nine ninety nine, yeah. um, and it was tough to get. And we had, you know, we'd get a couple cases a year, that kind of deal. And Rocky, the price point on this one usually, if you, you know. uh, I think it runs somewhere between twenty-seven to thirty-five dollars. Yeah, so that's a that you're, you yeah. know, if you're going to drop that kind of money on a Merlot, you expect something yeah, when you yeah. taste it. And I and you'll notice, like, when you look at this compared to like, if you if you tilt your glass, that thing is just solid. Yeah, all, all the way all the way you're to right. the rim. There's no there's Nothing. no uh, rim variation whatsoever. Sure. Versus the last ones that we had, I mean, it's, it's so you can tell that there's a lot of stuff that's mixed in here. I don't know that you know we, you're going to th think that this is a classic Merlot. It's not got that classic Merlot feel, but I love the stuff. It's uh, over the top is the way I like to. The way that the AVA this. works, which is the American Viticultural Association, yep, yep. is that what it is? Uh, it has to be seventy in order to call it a particular varietal. It has to be seventy-five percent of that grape. Right. So this is probably. 75%. Yeah. Like Matt said yeah. earlier, if he can get away with 74.9, he's probably going to do it. Right. But this tastes nothing like the rest of them do, but it's a it's delicious. <laughs> yeah, I th I'm glad we said it for the for the end cuz it's so noticeably different and at the same time it's it's delicious, it's juicy, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's yeah. there's really it, it's really quite nice. Yeah. Something like this, you're you, you know, you have new probably new American oak, right? And in in this one he's they're using French oak, two totally different uh 
types of oak that impart totally oh. different flavors into the yes. wine. Um, and with a price point like this, you know, they're using probably oak barrels that are, could be an average between three and 10 years old, blending them together. You know, with this wine, it's just, you know, you can get that vanilla. That vanilla that, you, that you know, imparts is, by the brand new American oak. Sure, it's, it's very intense. Yeah. But you know what? That new American oak, if it's done wrong, if it's overpowered, sure. a lot of Riojas, a lot of you yeah, know, a lot of things that you're it's getting not out of smoky. America can be overdone. It, is it me or, I, none of the Merlots we've tasted tonight, even the, the blends, whatever, have a strong bouquet. Is that common for Merlot, that it's not, the bouquet is not overly powerful when you're a... Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're getting a lot of that berry, you know, um, this it's subtle they've all been yeah subtle. they're they're yeah it's, they call it, it's they, a bad time of year to be honest they call that the intensity right? <laughs> intensity would be a medium minus on this one uh, but yeah it, it doesn't give you a whole lot on the nose and that's why you know a guy like matt that's blind tasting if you don't get a lot on the nose sure. immediately you go to merlot well right? this is one of those things that you can probably <coughs> you know you could lay that down for a little while for sure mm -hmm. um and it yeah might need some time to open up. I think if you let these wines open up a little bit, um, you know, especially the thorn, uh, you definitely see a difference over time. So in our remaining few minutes here also, I want to ask you, Matt, uh, both Matt and uh, Rocky, what's going on at Maximum Beverage for the spring? Anything big uh, shows, well, not shows, why tasting wise? Yeah, uh, well, well, I'm gonna put this out there. It's a little under wraps, uh, but there will be a big wine event coming up this summer. Um, so I want everyone to look out for that, um, wine fans. Uh, it's it's gonna be um, gonna be fun, um, and then uh, you know beyond that, you know there's always tastings. The you do all, some beverages you do. different, I think, than some stores. I'm not gonna say different than everybody, but different than some stores is we always have tastings, twelve to eight, whatever the state allows, as many bottles as we can open, is whatever the state allows, because there are some rules. But and you have food now. You can have food <laughs> now, we have right? cheese. Can I just cheese. tell a story about this little club that I have? Sure. I'm driving down the road, I get I get uh, the notifications from the Facebook thing, and he posts something. And so, you know, I, I, I had just pulled over and I said, he's popping a bottle of Kasakaya. But what was it, like 200 bucks to put on the table? Oh, the Sasakaya, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep, yep. I'm a little dyslexic today. Let's yeah, yeah we, we, yeah, we open, uh, you know, $100 wines. We open, you know, very, very inexpensive wines. So it's, it's all over the place. And, and it's the best way to, if, you, if you're afraid to taste something and you sure. haven't tried it, it's always good to go to a wine tasting. Yeah. You got it. Because it's that's free. how you, you, you appreciate your palate right. better. Right, it's it's free at Maximum Beverage, so just come by and try some wine. You know. And Rocky, in regards, do you guys have a Facebook page you want to talk about, or a Facebook just, page? Uh, there's a URL. I couldn't tell you what it is, but if you <laughs> go on to Facebook, uh, just um, I'll put it up on search our. for uh, West Hartford Wine Club. Uh, it is a closed group, so you do have to be. Uh, you, that's just so you know we don't get spam. Sure. Things like that, but yeah, you just um, request to join the the group. Well, mostly unless you look like a serial killer, we'll let you in, and uh, it's a fun little group. Uh, the one point that I want to make about it is that it's, you, you hear wine club, you think about stuffy old guys talking about terroir and, <laughs> you know, it, that's not what it's about. I, in fact, I want to draw in people who are just getting into wine, people who are holding on to that, that glass of Kendall Jackson Chardonnay going, oh, there's got to be more to this thing than this, you know, so th there's a lot of people on there that are willing to help you, you know, it's a, wine can be an intimidating thing, so... Uh. Come well, on I'm always join uh, giving join thumbs out to people who want more people to experience wine, yep. the pleasures of yep. wine, sure. wine. And uh, that's also, for Matt, for you guys, Maximum <laughs> Beverage was great when it was .com. It's great now that it's Maximum Beverage. Yeah. You're in a great spot. I know you got good word of mouth. Two and, uh, stores, West Hartford, Farmington. So I want to thank both you guys for being on the show tonight. And I'm sorry Jim couldn't be here. He's really missed a good show. And uh, Rocky, it's been a pleasure. And I look forward Likewise. to seeing you again. Matt, I'm sure I'll see Cheers. you again. Thanks for having us. And uh, until it. next time, guys, keep all of us in your wine cellar.